So what happens when a watch enthusiast tries to build his own watch? What is it like to build your first watch with a ready-made watch kit? Is it like building Lego, like I thought? Or is it just endless hours of fiddling without going anywhere and just a lot of frustration? From my experience, the truth is somewhere in between. It probably depends on how handy you are or how fat-fingered you are, how patient you are and how much you really want to make it happen. More on this later, but first, you saw the pop-up. This is a video with so-called paid promotion. I have not paid for this product. I have not been paid to make this video and uh, Namoki mods have uh, no influence about the content whatsoever. And if you watch till the end, you will see that that's pretty clear. And if you want to check out the, the watchmaking kits from uh, Namoki, you can find a link to uh, their website in the description. I have no uh, commission for this whatsoever, so it's uh, just for your service. But first, just a little bit of background info. I'm Hans and you're not, but you're welcome to my channel. Yay! One of the things that fascinates me about the automatic watches, it's, it's the movement, you know, the mechanics. And when you think about it, it's, uh, it's rather impressive that, um, that your body movement can actually power a spring, that powers a watch that can run for days just by some body movement. I think it's fascinating. And like many of you guys out there, yes, most of you are guys, not so many girls, unfortunately, watching this. The mechanical watches that I grew up with, that was my father's old pocket watch. And my grandfather's manual winding watch. And uh, automatic watches was not really on the table at all. It was not something we talked about when I grew up. And as a watch enthusiast, at least most of us, we're not likely to open our favorite watch and start messing about with it, are we? The first baby steps when you start playing with watch movements. It still has something mythical and, uh, and scary about it. And until I received an inquiry from uh, Namoki Mods, if I wanted to do a collaboration with them, uh, I was not thinking about uh, messing around with my favorite watches either. I wasn't actually aware that there were um, ready-made uh, watchmaker kits available. And Namoki told me to choose which style I wanted for the watch. And having never owned a Seiko Spork or a Pilot's watch, I chose the Spork Pilot. And as you can see, these are kind of affordable watch kits at around $200 to $300. So it's not a big investment to start with. You buy a complete set of parts, including the movement, the dial, hands, case, and crystal is attached, case back of course, a crown and crown stem and there's this essential user manual that you're gonna have to use. It also comes with a set of essential parts you need to get the job done. Well, almost. It turns out it comes with some tools you don't strictly need, or at least it doesn't come with any instructions for using them. And some of the instructions are not very useful, so more of that later. The quality of the tools and parts is decent enough for most of it, but below par on some. For example, this tweezer. That was rather quickly done. So what is it like to build a watch for the first time? It turned out to be more complicated than building Lego, at least for me, for a beginner. The first task is to remove two of the four fasteners to mount the dial on the movement. It does not come with tools for this, but a sharp knife will do the trick. But it does feel a little bit unnecessary. You have to start with this. And one of the trickiest bits is to assemble the hands on the dial. And that's the next step. You have to be super careful and make sure not to bend the hands. Because if you do, it's almost impossible to bend them back to their original state without screwing it up. And when they're bent, there's a risk of them hitting the dial so that the movement does not work appropriate. I'm talking from experience here. <laughs> the next problem I faced was to remove the crown stem that sits in the movement in order to mount the movement in the case and to fit the correct sized crown stem. And the instructions are a bit too vague, so I ended up watching random Rob's video for help many, many times, many times. And even then I found this a bit difficult. But I have to add, this is nothing particular for this watch kit. I think that goes for, at least for all the same kind of movements, the Seiko movement. It can be really hard to remove that crown stem for the first time. Especially for beginners, it will be difficult. So, a more precise instructions from the supplier would be needed here indeed. There is a video that takes you through the whole process. 
But I was not aware of that video before I started this. So that would be useful to have seen that one before attempting any of this. And there are links to both of these videos in the description as well. I also struggled to get the crown stem measured 100% correctly. And you have to be super precise to get this 100%. And you don't want to miss here, because then the crown won't really be properly fixed. And there are no tools for this in the kit. And there are no instructions for this either. And I actually asked them, and the first reply I got was that, no man, you don't have to do anything. This is, this crown stem is, is how it should be, but that's clearly not the case. You have to cut it. And I spent more time than I hoped and thought, and it was more difficult and more frustrating than I had anticipated. At the same time, it was very, very interesting. A very interesting experience. It was educational, it was fun, and I felt I have learned a lot from this. And after this, I felt confident enough to, to successfully adjust another Seiko movement in one of my favorite Seiko monsters. Uh, so now it actually runs more precisely. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to do that without having like first-hand, up-close experience with a watch movement like this. The whole experience demythicizes the watch movement for me. Uh, it takes away some of the fear of screwing up uh, your favorite watch. Like mentioned, there are some tools missing and there is a lack of instructions for some of the not so obvious tools what they should be used for and I think that's really needed in a starter kit. After all, this is a beginner starter kit, so it has to be Everything has to be really precise. For instance, there was a lack of information about the dial protectors and the finger cuts. And as you can see from a video, I actually started using gloves. So this could be improved. Uh, of course, I should probably have spent more time with all the, all the parts in, and all the tools, but I was really, really keen to start and really didn't, didn't really look through everything thoroughly. And for a noob like me, well, I'm a watch enthusiast, but I'm not a watch expert, I'm not a watchmaker, obviously. I'm just an enthusiast. Uh, the main issue, I think, is it's advertised as a kit for beginners. So the instructions must be made for beginners. And also clear instructions for the tools, because they are intended for beginners. And not that any real man would would ever be bothered to read an instruction manual, but, well, I did. But something tells me that the people who made everything here, uh, especially the instructions, they must be men. Because I think most women would probably pay more attention to details. This sounds like a lot of complaining. Sorry about that, but when it comes to watches, the devil is in the details always. And it says on their website, if you're brand new to watch modification or watch building, this is the perfect all-in-one solution for you. We carefully curated a selection of do-it-yourself watchmaking kits in a variety of styles. Pick your person. Our kit come with all the parts, tools, and instructions you'll need to build your own mechanical watch. And there is some truth with modifications to this. Now, that being said, uh, I can't really think of a better way uh, to get started with this. Uh, it takes away some of the mystery and some of the fear with the watch movements and it gives you a good start to this fascinating hobby. Uh, and by the way, here is my finished result. It's a nice watch and I'm glad I spent a few hours on this project. And there are of course other alternatives. You could buy a used cheap automatic watch uh, that you really don't care about. You can also get a, an old pocket watch uh, and open it up and start disassembling it. But uh, where do you really start? Where do you go from there? You can start here on YouTube and try to find the uh, right videos for this kind of movement. You have to make sure to find the exact right video for that exact uh, movement. And uh, it can be overwhelming without instructions. So at least it's been like that for me. Uh, the first time I tried to regulate my Seiko NH35 movement, uh, or what it's called, uh, 4R35, maybe that's the name of the original. Anyway, it's in my Seiko monster, but I couldn't even um, I couldn't even open the case back because uh, uh, the cheap tool that I had uh, really wasn't a good fit for uh, for that the case back. So it, it stopped right there. I couldn't even open the case back with that tool. And with a ready-made kit like this, uh, it's easy to start without messing up. You you are pretty sure that uh, everything is made to to fit and it's working well. And uh, if you need some support, the people at uh, Namoki are they're very helpful, and from my experience at least. So there we are. That's my experience. Now make sure to catch this video. It's pretty good too. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Take care. Peace out.